Oh hi, I didn't see you there. My name is Bliss Foster and today we're going to be talking about Craig Green Spring Summer 2020. Also we're doing LaCroix today because it is August and it's too hot for tea. Since Craig Green struck out on his own just a few short years ago, I've always seen his work as some kind of civil engineer's acid trip. His work always has this dream-like quality to it, where there's always these very vibrant colors and things always seem very surreal. But at the same time, his work feels very grounded in that when you're looking at it, you get the feeling that he could build a house from scratch if he wanted to. This show was covered and reported on by a lot of sources that did an incredible job of pulling some concrete details out of it. So a lot of what we're gonna be talking about today is just a summary of a lot of the stuff that I've read about this show and Craig Green in general. While I'm showing you the clothes from this season, I'm going to read you a quote from Sarah Mower that I think succinctly describes what Craig Green's appeal is. She says, It's disturbing when a designer's impulses aren't easy to follow, when they don't fit a known template, when they aren't explained by his or her having gone to a gallery, read a book, or taken a holiday. In a way, that's the whole effect of being at a Craig Green show. It's the worrying thrill of trying to understand his shapes and his reasoning the guesswork he puts you through, and the certainty that he's breaking untrodden terrain. Yes, 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 let's begin. So Craig Green has talked a lot about this collection in various interviews and we have a lot of his own words about the clothes that we can kind of use to guide us through the show. So typically this is where we start in with the show notes, but what we're going to do is we're actually going to save the show notes for the very end and we're going to use all of Craig Green's actual quotes about the show as we move through it. The show notes are a little bit more abstract, so I think those will be like a nice like way to wrap everything up as we like kind of think about all the things we've learned today. So in Craig Green's statements that he gave to Another Man magazine, he said, At the beginning, we were thinking a lot about skin. Skin is a protector, as a layer you could put on top of. I've always thought it's quite a weird thing that you wear it to protect yourself on a motorcycle. There's something quite disgusting about it. Then if we link that in with the article from Vogue about the show, Sarah Mower points out some other points of inspiration that I imagine were shared with her backstage. Skin. That thought led him to multiple places of research and connection, with Zoroastrian anatomical drawings, a weird Egyptian idea, this idea of being embalmed and buried with all your worldly goods coming into it. He traveled from there to Christian Easter celebrations, resurrection iconography. And so these are kind of some things that we can use to sort of give us a baseline of thinking about the collection. Skin, resurrection, mummification. It's interesting to hear a designer who's willing to work with leather and who's clearly not a vegan at all kind of talk about leather like a vegan would. And regardless, it's just kind of always refreshing to hear somebody who doesn't necessarily believe something be able to empathize with that line of thinking. That like if you're riding a motorcycle and you're wearing a leather jacket and you're going 60 miles an hour and you suddenly think, huh, leather jackets are skin. That's gross. And something that I think is good for us to keep in mind as we're going through this show is some words that he gave to show studio in an interview from a few years ago. I think I'm a bit obsessed with the similarities between workwear and religious wear. Both have a feeling of putting people into groups. And then he goes on a little bit later to say, workwear is a clothing for a purpose, and religious wear is clothing not for a physical purpose, but an imagined one, a feeling. It's almost impossible to go through a Craig Green show without identifying something that is a workwear item, something that is a piece of clothing for getting a job done. But then also something that seems to, even if it's not a direct reference, something that feels religious. I also really like the fact that he linked this starting point of skin with the Egyptian process of mummification and embalming. Because all of that came about because there was this religious idea that you would need your skin and your body for the afterlife. And in addition to that, you would need all all of your objects too. So taking those same ideas to talk about like the afterlife of an animal living on as an article of clothing that we use to protect ourselves as we continue in our lives. It kind of keeps this trippy Craig Green flow of thought going. His statements that he gave to another man magazine start with the first section of looks, which are looks one through nine. Quote, so the first section was leather with embedded rib. There was a play on the rib becoming the skin and the leather becoming the skin and all those color changing ideas. So just so we're clear about what he's talking about here, when he says rib, he means ribbing like the way that ribbing is on a sock. So like cotton ribbing. 
So I think this is something where he's doing a little bit of wordplay. If you have absolutely no muscle, like myself, and like kind of all of your ribs are like faintly visible on the surface of your skin. And again, if we think about Craig Green from this perspective of like acid trip misunderstandings, you could sort of see like that like ribs might become like a mistaken like texture for the skin. That's like the way the skin is, is it has this kind of like wave to it. And so he takes that as a word play and incorporates this cotton ribbing into the actual leather garments themselves. Again, I think that further supports the rib idea that like technically skin and ribs are two separate things, but they're part of the same body. And really when you look at them right up next to each other, it does look like they're the same thing. You might need to pause here and take some acid. As the show starts and the first model turns the corner to hit the mirrored runway, we hear the song Goodbye Horses by Q Lazarus start to play, which many may recognize from the movie Silence of the Lambs. This is the song that's playing when the serial killer is like dancing around and stuff and being all like silly and scary. Here again, Craig seems to be kind of playing with the disturbing idea of using another thing's skin as decoration. Since that's kind of the whole thing about Silence of the Lambs is that he's wanting to like kidnap this girl to take her skin. Somewhat interesting side note is that a lot of these looks seem to be inspired by nurses' vests, which is a very cool addition to the Craig Green uniform legacy. This is also the part of the show where we see the objects that Craig designed for this specific one. Since the dawn of his brand, Craig has wowed us with these insane objects objects that he attaches to his model's bodies. For me, this has kind of always been the core of the acid tripping nature of Craig Green's work. Most of the time, as we've seen, these objects are very, very big. Sometimes they even like block the model's eyesight. But this time we're seeing like totems, like things that you could conceivably carry around with you if you wanted to. To be honest, I'm really hoping that he actually sells these things. They would make a killer FitPick accessory. These objects were made by a regular collaborator with Craig Green, his name is David Curtis Ring. And when he posted them to his Instagram, he described them as bags, so maybe there's hope that they'll actually go up for sale. And about these specific objects, Craig said, I liked that they looked a bit like bone, but also like wind chimes or some kind of alien instrument, but they're made from plumbing pipe. They kind of look like hieroglyphics as well, in an abstract, non-hieroglyphic type of way. I wanted to squash them into the body and to embed the plastic into the skin. They were meant to be drums. I liked the idea of skin being drums, and I guess that's where the innocence idea comes from as well. A drummer boy in battle. They were glorified like the mascots of the brigade and would run the beat for men to fight and march to. They were kind of an untouchable youth. So here again, we kind of see this way that Craig is like taking things and he's very loosely tying things together. And that would maybe be a point of weakness for someone's art, except that he seems to be doing this by the same grammar. Like every season, he seems to have this same technique of linking big planets of thought using yarn. And the results always end up being not only consistent, but just really, really beautiful. Yeah, I also personally really like how the ones that are actually embedded into the skin sort of come back to that same idea of like ribs, it's sort of like ribs on the outside. And when you look at these, especially the ones that are on the body, they definitely summon up imagery of like religious stuff or cultish things. Even though it's just PVC pipe that's been coated or painted in something weird, he seems to be able to effortlessly summon up this idea of religiosity without having to be ham-fisted about it. The second section and the third section of clothes are kind of intertwined a bit. The second section of clothes is really numbers 10, 12, 14, 16, and then looks 18 through 22. Craig's official statement from this, again, these official statements are coming from the Another Man magazine statement. But then it moved into quilted skin, which was transparent and then padded, bound and quilted like a wrinkly sports square. And structurally, these are really interesting garments as well. They look like they are multiple pieces layered on top of each other, but if we look here, we can see that the piping especially shows us that they are in fact a single article of clothing. But yeah, there's not a whole lot of conceptual stuff here because this is more classic Craig Green. The item of clothing that has essentially kept him in business has been the quilted work jacket that has all these extra strings attached to it. Here we're exploring that in some very interesting colors, a couple of interesting lengths, and some rather cool transparencies. There's not really a whole lot to say about this section of the show because I imagine a lot of it is more economic in nature rather than artistic. Kind of him reassuring all of the buyers that are present for the show that the best-selling Craig Green item will be returning to their stores in the coming season. 
The next section of looks are the ones that are in between the different looks for part two. Craig had this to say about them. Then it moved into the dream suits. We wanted to make something that you would wear to dream in. So they're all hand embroidered padded silk. They're bodily shapes, but inspired by Erastrian anatomical drawings where the muscles almost look like flowers. For a lot of people, these were the looks that really cemented this as a really good Craig Green show. You can kind of vaguely see outlines of muscle groups and ribs and sections of the body inside and outside, and then these colorful flower firework looking things that are made using a whip stitch. It's worth noting here that these are made of satin and that Craig tends to work basically only in cotton. He said before that that's never actually been a purposeful thing, but just that as they continue to edit away stuff that they don't want to include in seasons, they often look at the full collection when they're done and say, oh, it turned out to all be cotton again. Now Craig says that these were inspired by Erastrian anatomical drawings. And let me assure you, I have Googled that phrase sideways looking for the inspiration for this stuff and I cannot find it anywhere. If anyone knows anything about where this stuff came from, please send it to me on Instagram. I beg of you. There are a lot of very old anatomical drawings that do bear a resemblance to the final product here. I mean, like this kind of looks like something he could have drawn inspiration from. So does this or even this. But as far as the actual official original source, I have no idea. One thing about these looks that is really interesting are these hanging gloves. There's multiple pairs on each look and none of them are getting used for their intended purpose. It's worth noting that attached gloves like that are something that's often incorporated into children's clothing. The hanging gloves vaguely remind me of a certain image from the Dehumani Corporis Fabrica, where the muscles are flayed away for learning reasons and it might be the most unintentionally horrifying thing that I have ever seen. Fun fact, a surviving copy of that book is actually bound in tanned human skin. Finally, on the continuing topic of resurrection that runs through this show, it is worth noting that this specific look does bear a striking resemblance to one of the figures in the painting Resurrection by Piero Dello Francesca shows a similar bodysuit looking idea for that same look. Moving on to one of the more crazy sections of the show, we have these looks, which are just absolutely wild. And in that same statement to Another Man magazine, Craig Green said, the padded suit looks became almost some magical god. They were moving so fast it just became many hands and many feet. There was that innocence idea, the gingham, the prints on top of them. They're from machines that teach you how to fold your shirt. You know that woman, Marie Kondo, it's a shirt folding device that has the arrows that teaches you how to fold it. I liked that they kind of looked like recycling bags for your body, not to sound so dark. That's why I like the symbols. It looks like the animals and the earth are eating your body like a plastic bag. This is maybe the part of his statement where he gets the most abstract because I'm honestly not sure where he's going with the animals and the earth eating your body like a plastic bag. But I do think it is fascinating that he is referencing a very real shirt folding device that is featured on the Marie Kondo Netflix show. This ties back very interestingly to the idea of being buried with all of your worldly possessions. Not only because we're talking about someone who is trying to sell you worldly possessions, but also because Marie Kondo is someone who heavily advocates that people should give up most of the objects that they own. Isn't it funny that one of the things that Marie Kondo chose to keep was a thing for her things? All right, moving on. Fifth section of looks is only a few. It's looks 27 through 29, and he doesn't even make a statement about it because I think they're meant to just be things that are gonna sell really well. It's the same stuff that he's kind of always done. They're very practical workwear inspired things that have these little circular holes in them. That's a ongoing theme for all of his wardrobe staples that he continues every season. He's just kind of spiced them up this season by putting a little bit of decoration around the holes, which looks great to be honest. All right, time for the really crazy stuff. The official statement about the craziest clothes in this collection are, the patterns and shapes were inspired by Mexican and Eastern designs. I like the idea that there's something so far away, but they're also about resurrection. To start, I think it's definitely worth reminding everyone that Craig Green interned for Walter Van Bierdendonk. And despite the fact that Craig has definitely come into his own as far as the usage of color is concerned, you can clearly see the influence of Walter on these looks specifically. The most direct reference for these looks are these flags that can often be seen at Mexican markets. There was a point where these flags were only used for certain celebrations during the year like Easter and Christmas, but they've since become 
become so heavily ingrained into Mexican culture that they tend to just have them up most of the time. The making of these banners is called papel picado, which literally means punched paper. It originally came about from wealthy Mexicans importing goods from Asia. The goods would always be wrapped up in this nice, beautiful paper. And it came about mostly as a waste not, want not mentality, and they would use chisels to punch out designs and then hang them up for decoration. But what's interesting is that instead of using a really delicate material, Craig used a ripstop nylon that's typically used as a sail and then laser cut the design into them. Craig apparently wanted this to be a little more subdued in the beginning, but by the end he says it changed into a standout alien bisexual. So continuing in this idea of resurrection, it's this paper that was used to house something of great value that got removed and repurposed to celebrate a resurrection with its own resurrection. And in the same way, Craig reused something that was for a totally different purpose, sailing, and used it to also symbolize this resurrective idea. The next section of looks, which is look 38 through 43, Craig doesn't actually make any specific statements about. The print on them does look great, and they do have a very distinct I was made by Craig Green look to them. It kind of fits within his canon very well. The final section of looks are fascinating in this show. There's a pretty big change of direction that goes on. We have to jump around a little bit in the Another Man article in order to get all of his statements about this section, but he says, the last section was the elasticated bodies. So the word elasticated in clothing means that it becomes elastic because of a rubber band or tape. So I imagine that's what these lines are here on the garments is it's an elastic tape. So yeah, we just have these images of male nude bodies. It's kind of a final reflection on skin. When the show first came out, 10 Men Magazine made the observation that these final looks kind of remind them of Katarina Jeb's photography work. It's also maybe worth noting that the backs of some of these looks look vaguely like mylar blankets, which are the ones you use to recover from hypothermia. Anyway, in the last statements about the show, Craig made this comment about the final looks. The lines on the body, I was reading about how they used to measure people's faces to tell if they were a criminal or a certain type of person. Okay, cool. Craig Green, Spring Summer 2020. This is a really great example if you want to learn the grammar of how shows get put together from an inspiration point of view. Craig was sweet enough to be really transparent with all of his inspirations and where stuff was being pulled from so that we can all kind of dig through it and revisit this show time and time and time again. Craig Green is one of my favorite designers of all time and I am incredibly grateful to my awesome friend who sent me these show notes. Go follow me on Twitter and Instagram where you can enjoy the wonderment of me every day of the week. We're gonna close out with some very beautifully written show notes from Dr. Craig Green. Following a light-filled stream, Craig Green's travelers have begun a new phase of instinctive exploration. Faced with their own image, intense self-study sheds new light on the intricacies of even the simplest forms. Examining further, an unrelinquishing gaze reveals larger shifts in perception that begin to bend the parameters of established ideas. Forming the touch papers of compulsion, alternative truths are found in a complex tapestry of the real and the illusory, where a synthesis between organic and synthetic constructions is forged. Led by a series of lantern men sheathed in luminous colors, this increasingly inextricable network is punctuated by eruptions of muscle and flesh. Sudden windows that ornately frame or otherwise carefully replicate the male form through protective layers. Here, symbolic comforters embellished with hazy remembrances imitate the bonds of bodily contact, whilst fully enveloping shrouds of imagery depict long-held ideals that have fractured to now shimmer with possibility. Talk to you guys next week. Bye-bye.